you left the city. Paimon kept her eyes on you the whole time, but then you... disappeared in an instant. No way! Paimon was watching you with the fullest attention. What's your perspective, Traveler? You sure you don't have any memory of this? I guess that explains everything. You also lost your memories the last two times you tried to leave the city. Those days' memories can't be awoken. So, if we leave the city, our memories will be completely erased? It really sounds like something big outside of the city is being hidden on purpose. But this way, we'll also never discover what's outside! Something like... a message? But how can we send it back? D don't look at me like that! I'm... I'm not used to being stared at. Well... Okay, okay. You want something that can pass on messages, right? Give me some time and take care of Dunyarzad for me. Yep! Now we're talking! Done. Here you go. What? Isn't this just an Akasha? I need some little changes. Akasha terminals are already capable of sending messages. I just tweaked it so that it could connect to any node. To make something like this? Nahida. You really know the Akasha like the back of your hand! Anyway, we can use this now to record a message, right? Yep. <laughs> I'll help you save the messages. It should be pretty easy to use. I just can't guarantee the user's status and signal coverage when they're outside the city. We'll never know until we try! At least we're taking the initiative now. Let's go then! Let's expose those sages! <sighs> All right. Paimon isn't as worried about being separated since it happened once yesterday. But... Paimon still isn't happy about it. Okay. See you tomorrow, Traveler. That covers everything that's happened so far. <sighs> Yes, although the signal was choppy and had some interference, we still managed to receive two messages from you when you were outside. Okay, now that you understand what's going on, let's hear the messages together. Can't go back. There are countless spaces here. Our Subzeru's festival in Sumeru City is just one of them. I've entered another space. Before me are flowing sandstone and howling fish. Impossible and surreal sights. All these spaces are empty except for the occasional ones that contain mute puppets rather than people. I can't sense any human presence. It's one heck of an info dump. It sounds like you left the Sumeru city space when you set foot outside of the walls. But everything looked completely normal when Paimon was looking out from the inside. That's unbelievable. And if we take your word for it, the other spaces all had very weird contents. 
There's another part here. I only received it last night. These spaces have been disappearing one after the other, absorbed by something like a sun in the sky. And now, even the final space has also disappeared. Behind me, a lot of spaces just appeared again from thin air. I get it now! Those spaces are actually... Probably because yesterday just happened to end at that moment. Oh, right. Paimon did hear a beep from the Akasha. Did it come from here or from the message? The message. It should have come from the Traveler's Akasha Terminal. After the beep, Traveler said even the final space has also disappeared. <sighs> Traveler, what do you think that final space could have been? All the bizarre spaces I saw outside the city had one thing in common. A lack of human presence. My impression is that each day in this samsara only ends at the sound of that beep from the Akasha. Was that space actually the real world? But wouldn't a real space just randomly disappearing like that be catastrophic? over seven seats. So no matter how strange or spooky things may look on the surface, maybe all they point to in the end is a small and simple secret. Wow, the Archon War, huh? That's an analogy and a half. The dance of Subzeros is about to begin. I'm going to go watch it. Okay. Um, why don't you go ahead, Dunyarzad? We still have some other stuff to do first. Okay, then. I'll see you later. Have you figured it out yet, Traveler? Time is ticking away! Awesome! What is it? Paimon wants to know! Oh, wait, no. Let's meet up with Nahida first. You can tell us both together. This time, we're gonna get to the truth. Really? You're gonna make me do go back? Again, this is what I kinda hate. The need to go in here, I'll pull back. Go in here, I'll pull back. It's become annoying. I mean, yesterday it was a similar case. And they actually knew that. They didn't need to make a step right here and there every time. You're back! I've been waiting forever for you two! Judging by the looks on your faces, are you ready to take your Subzerius exam and graduate from the festival? <laughs> okay. First off, have you discovered the hidden truth? P 
people in Sumeru don't dream. What a strange phenomenon. The moon, all the bazaar. Those spaces remind we've all okay. We are all the moon, people in okay. We've all. All the bizarre. No space. That doesn't sound right. That doesn't. People in Sumeru think they don't dream, but the truth is the Akasha steals their dreams without them knowing it. And those spaces with no human presence are stolen dreams without their host. That would explain why they sounded so weird when he was trying to describe them. Huh. So people in Sumeru do dream after all. In fact, we're all in one big dream together right now! Correct answer. Now, how did you conclude that the Akasha is capable of this? The Akasha... That doesn't sound... And it grip... That doesn't sound... It can... That doesn't sound... It is the manifest... Oh, okay. Those dream-controlling creatures in the forest also get their power from the Dendro Archon, right? That would explain why the Akasha has the ability to control people's dreams, too. But is stealing everyone's dreams really how the Akasha compiles their wisdom? Isn't there anything more to it than that? Dreams are fantastical, complex, and full of imagination. People's brains are the most active when they're dreaming. In other words, dreams are rich bundles of human wisdom. So, in other words, the complete opposite of how Hypatia understood it. Parma remembers her saying that the sages think dreams are foolish delusions, and the fact that no one dreams is a blessing from Greater Lord Ruka Devada. Hmm. So it was all a dirty trick? The real story is that the sages from the Academia are using the Akasha to steal people's dreams for their own use, huh? Oh? By the sounds of it, you understand the current situation pretty well. So then, what about the Samsara? We've already... That doesn't... The beep... That doesn't... The Grand Sage said, That doesn't sound right. My mind. That doesn't sound. Those spaces kept disappearing before my eyes. Those dreamscape. Hmm. Akasha is keeping each person's brain in a constant dream state, but also separating their consciousness from their own dream. Their disembodied consciousness is placed inside the collective dream of the Subzerus Festival along with everyone else's, while their now vacant dreams are harvested by the Akasha. No one is any the wiser as another day passes in the dream, and so begins another Samsara cycle. People wake up to yet another dream about the Subzerus Festival. The dreams that belong to them are once again harvested by the Akasha. And so it continues. So, this is like a dream factory. And the Akasha is a dream harvesting machine. Did Paimon get that analogy right? <laughs> Very good, Paimon. Using analogies well is an excellent habit to get into. Okay. So that beep we keep hearing is actually from our real-life Akasha terminals. 
Taking off our terminals in this stream doesn't do anything! Alright, last question. Who am I? They say that I... <laughs> so you noticed. Uh -huh, I thought that one would be the hardest question. That's why I put it last. <sighs> that wasn't hard at all. Even Paimon guessed that. Everything about you is different. We just didn't want to expose you is all. Now that you mention it, Nahida, you've been hinting to us since the very beginning. It's funny. Thinking back to when we were asking all over the place for info about Lesser Lord Kusanali. Paimon didn't expect to meet you like this. Yes, those can wait until we're back in real life. On the other hand, I'd be happy to answer any more questions you have about here and now. You asked me this question before. My answer was, it would literally blow your minds. Now that you know this is all a dream, this answer should hopefully make more sense. Have you heard the saying, don't wake a sleepwalker? Likewise, if someone suddenly had told you all this instead of you learning it on your own, your notion of reality and dream would be thrown into irreversible confusion. I couldn't expose you to that kind of risk. That's why I could only give you very subtle hints and some suggestions. Long story short, I'm really sorry I had to keep you guessing. Firstly, this dream we're in is completely based on reality. People have already experienced this sub festival, so it would be very difficult for them to find anything that strikes them as surreal. Secondly, you're probably wondering why people don't have any memories from earlier samsara, right? That's because people don't remember their dreams most of the time anyway. And in any case, their actual dreams are being taken away from them by the Akasha. So whenever they wake up in this dream of the Subzerus Festival, they don't remember anything from their previous identical dream. That reminds Paimon! Traveler had a dream when we were in the Avidia Forest, but couldn't see what it was about after waking up. Is that an example of what you mean? Yes. Only after receiving the blessing of Dendro can a person gain the Dendro element's dream-enhancing power. That explains the feelings of deja vu. Meanwhile, everyone else has no idea that they are in the Subzerus Festival Samsara, while their dreams are stolen from them over and over again. Can humans really keep dreaming forever like this? Will it ever end? And if so, when? You might say your mental fatigue has already answered this question. Eventually, there's only so much that people can tolerate. Especially those whose health is compromised to begin with, like Dunyarzad. This relentless exploitation takes an even harder toll on them. People's lives are at stake here, and nobody knows a thing! We've got to put a stop to this! I know, right? Why did they have to base this dream on my birthday? Could it really just be a coincidence? Even you don't know the reason? Wow, now that's strange. The Academia Sages are determined to harvest lots of dreams in a short time, no matter the cost. They have to be up to no good. Unfortunately, I don't know anything about it. Traveler, do you have any information? Those spaces remind me of... dreams. Like the one I had in the Avidia Forest. The Grand Sage said... Celebrate the birth of that god? 
did it mean? Deceiving the people of Samaru with no regard for their safety. No matter what they're trying to do, this is unforgivable. After we end the Subzerus Festival Samsara, we have to look into them. How can the sages of the Academia do this behind their Archon's back? This is ridiculous! In the end, I'm just the moon. The real sun is long gone. A sun and a moon? <sighs> Nahida's talking in riddles again. Not again. Oh, we're out of time today! I'll tell you how to break free of the samsara tomorrow. See you then. <laughs>